regard. But it turns out that you can define, as long as these things have an internal complexity that can match the external complexity, okay, then the machine is capable. If the external complexity is too much, then so then then, then uh, too much for the internal complexity of the machine, then it is no longer capable of actually being able to solve problems. And um, uh, we we've got a videotape of this thing against other robots, which is really quite interesting, because it will jostle for position, and ultimately you'll find a position where if it can't go through something, sorry, if it can't go around something, it'll try and push it. <laughs> okay, and just okay. Right now, it's, right now it seems to uh, it seems to. Um, uh, uh, have a bit of a problem with that uh, flashlight, but in a, in a few steps or so, you'll feel you'll see it falls into a condition where it'll push the situation and change its change its walking pattern again. So, what's happening here? Is it something electronic? Is it something mechanic? Is are we modifying the world? Okay, maybe it's a combination of all of them. And Regardless, it's modifying its body as well. The phases of all the motors get into a certain state. And That's right. A, plas a, plastic, a plastic structure. As compared to conventional robotics, which is sort of like, you know, push it till it breaks. Okay? This is a plastic structure which is capable of solving very complex dynamical situations. And this one is, um, is pretty adept. This can walk sideways in a variety of other different ways. Um, the other machines that we have can handle much more complex structures because they have a better power ratio. You know, weight and power is always handy. It's always nice to know that if you do have a simple machine, a weak machine, you can come up with this technology. The technology, oh, there it goes. System, yeah, that's right. A system which allows it to be able to negotiate complex environments without damaging itself or the environment over. And this is, for example, if you want robots to go out and sort of like replant the rainforest, you don't want to have them have tractor treads because they'll run over all of the uh, bean shoots that they're trying to plant. Right? This device, on the other hand, is, is um, it, it's polite with respect to its environment. Now, the other thing is that um, when we have them with respect to the other walking machines, we find that there is a body language to uh, walking machines which can be translated between cooperative machines. And so the reason the buffalo walk can, can race together so closely is because they can feel their muscles bounce forth and back again and fall into a wonderful beat frequency mode. And so um, it implies that the, this sort of controller does not just synchronize internally to the mechanics, it can synchronize externally. So you can have many of the same creatures, and all of a sudden you have a natural uh, basin of survival, uh, a natural survival attractor for them. And this is a very interesting. This is a very interesting concept. Now, what's uh, I can see that the duty cycle of those motors seem to be just right. Yes. Now, um, did you fix the yes. resistors? Yeah. So that the motors didn't go. Yes, or just that's right. You, you find you, what you do is you build the mechanism, right? You find the particular characteristics of that mechanism. You find the particular mechanical characteristics, which if you were to do the inverse kinematics would drive you crazy. Okay, right. That's right. And then uh, you just sort of like fix them so that they wind up moving straight line. Very straight. Like what you do is you set it just like walk in a straight line. Very well. Okay. And then you start modifying it by adding external sensors. This is um, this is actually a really good example, right? So you can have an external sensor that would be like yeah, fiddle with this resistance value. Yes. Now we change the duty cycle. Well, now, now, that, yes. Let, 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 let me let me let me let me let me show you this. Uh, it's not also how many how many little uh, right there do you have in here? Now you're giving an additional goal That's right. to move towards light. Before it just had a goal to move. Now it's just a goal to move, and then it would actually act as proximal. There are three different types of sensors. There are internal, there is, there, there is internal, there is proximal, and there is distal. Right? This thing has, these are the proximal sensors. And as you can see, what they do is they create an attractor, okay, like a Lorenz attractor, and that's very much what is happening. You get something which winds up looking like this, going around an attractor, which is right here. That attractor has two conditions. One is translation. If you reverse it, so does the machine. Okay? Look down here, all of a sudden it, it has these oscillators which form into a new basin attractor down here. If you shift it to the left or shift it to the right, right, the machine travels trapezoidally. Okay? So now it's not turning, it is actually walking sideways. And if you put in a secondary stimulus through another series of resistors, you can rotate that attractor. And the mechanism will go not kind of towards light source, but straight towards the light source. Okay, sorry, I've got a... Yeah, very narrow light source. Yeah, I've got a very narrow light source here.
your watch, right? If that pro, pro which is not a reverse sensor, but it was a recharge sensor, it just it just made the goal. Except <laughs> for a chaotic, except for a chaotic machine, right? It's, it's, it's not too shabby. The reason the little electric lights actually shine up is that when it is that it's attracting the light right now, but when it walks backwards, because of the way that it's shaped, it always winds up going. Um, it always winds up uh, going away from the light. So when it bumps into something, what these eyes do is that they illuminate something that's close to it, right? And that means that it actually illuminates the closest wall when it gets in some the corner. And then it will back out of that corner that is close, that back out against the wall it's closest to. So that means it doesn't stochastically get caught into a corner. It will systematically bump its way out and do a wall fall. That's right. So how many little stages do you have in this? That was exactly the answer. Six. That's right. The five motors, and we also have the same the same mechanism in this creature right here, and also in the other devices. Okay, like a Dagobus, which is very similar in design, but only two motors, much more power efficient. No, it will. It will. It, 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 um, yeah, it's it's freaky. I mean, like if you if you were to we want to do a video, which is sort of like your mutual Omaha's Wild World of robots and stuff like that. They've got over a hundred now, various different species, and um, watching long-term behaviors of these things exhibit uh, these bizarre behaviors is really great. Miller's machine right here. Okay. Okay, that's a fast speed. That's a six neuron. You can slow down the process by killing it off, right? <laughs> you get this little, you get this little uh, 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 hot, hot and dense. Yeah, that's right. And you kill it again. See, the advantage is, is that, okay, well, there we go. We got a very efficient pushing algorithm here. But the emergent properties are, the more processes you generate, the faster the process is one going. So that means that the speed of these things automatically cycle between slow paces and otherwise. You optimize these things for this pace right here, the slow pace, and all the other paces come out naturally. Okay, just wait until you get sorted this up. There it goes. <laughs> okay. And if you have any insects that you happen to see, okay. Now, this is interesting. If we leave that alone, what he'll actually wind up doing is he'll wind up turning himself around. Okay. Oh, no, he settled into a quick 50. Might cycle out of it, actually. Okay, this is interesting. We've got two processes kicking around this thing at a perfect 90 degrees to one another. That's why its legs are stopped moving. But if I put in this signal right here, I attenuate one of those circuits, I attenuate one of those neurons, okay, and all of a sudden, okay, I get the little jitterbug, because I force the things 120 degrees to another. In a six neuron machine, you can never get them closer than one neuron together, which means that they're only 120 degrees apart. They come up with a variety of different ways of recognizing it. They come up with a wide variety of ways of actually doing this. When we take this thing, for example, this little neuron structure, uh, this is getting a little crowded.